Hello everybody and welcome to another quick Dwarf Fortress tutorial. In this video we're going to be ca covering pastures and butchering, okay? We're also going to be covering the use of cages for livestock and animal training. So this particular episode is going to be a little bit packed, but hopefully it'll be useful information that you can use in your fortress. So first things first, you'll notice here we have this cage, which inside of it has an elephant in it. And it's kind of a shame, it's a very sad elephant. It's a tame elephant that we embarked with and we've put it in this cage as for de demonstration purposes. Purposes. Now, there's several different ways we can get this elephant out of this cage, but before we talk about that, we're going to cover making a zone first. So we're going to make ourselves a pen and pasture zone. So we're going to just select the zone button, either by hitting Z on the keyboard or clicking the button down at the bottom, and then click and drag, and we're going to make a nice non-circle because, well, circles are boring, and then we are going to click accept. And then up here you'll see there's this little button where we can add animals to this zone. Now certain types of animals need to graze, others don't. If you notice an animal that's running around in your fortress and they're hungry, they're probably a grazer and they need to be stationed in one of these grazing zones over top of either grass or floor fungus underground if you've broken into the caverns. So what we're going to do is we're going to assign our elephants and our mule and our cavey, which our uh, guinea pig here does need to be pastured, and then any fowl are good, so birds don't need to be pastured of that sort. Unless, uh, if you want to pasture birds, one good use for pasturing birds is nest boxes. If you put a nest box in the pasture, the birds will then normally just go uh, lay their eggs in the nest box. Dwarves will automatically con collect these eggs as part of food. So we do actually have a nest box constructed here, so I'm just going to quickly grab one. We're just going to go over here into the workshops, then we're going to go into farming. Excuse me, I have the hiccups apparently. We're going to go into farming, and we're just going to plop two of these down or one of these down, uh, in that zone, and we're also going to assign our birds. Now, unfortunately, this keat here that we have is too young to lay eggs yet, but at the very least, we'll have an example. We can also chuck this goose in here, and maybe they will lay some eggs for us. Now, once they get all this constructed, uh, we will be able to select this here box, and if you keep an eye on it, you'll immediately see eggs have popped in, right? Our goose has run over and laid us a goose egg. Now, if we forbid this goose egg, now, you do have to kind of keep an eye on these. If you forbid this goose egg, the dwarves will not collect it and use it as food. And if we have a male goose around, which we don't, uh, then it, they will hatch after uh, X amount of time and make a bunch of baby geese, and then you can breed your fowl. Otherwise, you can use it as a seemingly infinite food source until they decide to fall over and die of old age, or you butcher them. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to cover this cage here. So we have this elephant, right? It's in this deconstructed cage. So you, you click on the cage, and there's nothing you can do. The first way that we can get this elephant out of this cage, let's, let's just say we just purchased it, is we could go to Cages and Restraints and go to Cage, and then we can select Material After Placement, and then if you happen to have a lot of different cages, uh, click these down arrows, and then you can select the elephant in the cage. We only have the one cage, so it makes our life easy. And then the dwarf's going to come over here, and they're going to construct the cage. Now from here, we can click on the cage once again, and we can click on this check mark, and that will release the elephant from the cage. Now, if you want to assign an animal to the cage, you can then click on this arrow here, and we can put the elephant back into the cage. Now, that's the first way you can let something out of a cage. If it's not tame, you don't really want to do it that way, because what's going to end up happening is you're going to end up fighting with whatever you just let out of this cage, right? We're now going to deconstruct the cage again, and I'm going to show you a second method of also getting animals out of cages. I actually prefer this second method as I find it easier and less annoying. Uh, if you hit Z on the keyboard and pop up your zones, and you happen to have a pasture zone, you can then click on that pasture zone. You can click on the animal icon on the pasture zone, and then you can find the elephant that's in the cage, and they will simply run over to the cage, let the elephant out of the cage without you having to construct it, and bring it to the pasture zone so that the elephant can graze. One more thing I would like to cover in this video is animal training. And then we're also going to cover butchery at the very end. But first I want to cover animal training. So if you make an animal training zone, which uh, can be found right here, then if you happen to have an animal like let's just say a dog or an elephant that you wish to war train or hunting train, then you can press U on the keyboard, go over to pets and livestock tab, and then you can select some of these uh, rules here. So we in the center here we have training, and then over on the right we have butchery, and I'll make available as a pet. If you want a dwarf to be able to acquire one of these animals as a pet and make them unbutcherable, then you can click this button, and it says available as pet. And then any dwarf that happens to like dogs could claim this dog as their pet, and then that dog can't be slaughtered. 
Secondly, if you wish to assign a specific trainer, you can use this button. And then there are two options for dogs here as an example. The two options for dogs are uh, uh, war training, which can then be assigned to a military dwarf to then go out on raids or defend your fortress. And they'll also simply go and attack wild animals that are dangerous to your fortress. Or you can toggle them as hunting, where they will where where they will specifically seek out small prey and bring them back into your fortress for you. Or your dwarves will go get them if they decide to not. So for this instance, I'm going to tame, tra train this dog as these two dogs as war trained. Also, the concept of a hunting elephant is hilarious to me. So we're going to train a hunting elephant as well. Now what we're going to see is we're going to see our dwarves run over, and they are going to grab uh, the... Uh, th these these trainable uh, animals, and they're going to bring them over to this zone. And as you can see, train stray dog. They're going to bring them to this training zone, and uh, then you're going to almost immediately notice these dogs, after a couple attempts, uh, become a different sprite. And then they're going to be hunting dogs, and they're going to be much more useful around the fortress than just running around as normal mutts. So that's training. That's animal pasturing. That's eggs. The last thing we're going to do is butchery. Now, if you're going to butcher an animal, there's two shops you want to make. You want to go to farming, and you want to go to tanner, and you want to make one of these, because you don't want that good, uh, that, that good leather to go to waste. And then the second thing that you want to build is you want to build a butcher shop. And what you're going to do is you're going to place both of these shops, and once they're constructed, the dwarves can then have butchered animals to be assigned. So we're going to be a horrible person here and select somebody to eat. And our edible animal of choice is, drumroll pre, please, this poor mule. Um, we're going to select the uh, big old butcher knife button. It's going to say ready for slaughter. And then a dwarf is going to run over here and they are going to slaughter this mule as soon as this shop is ready. Here comes the job. As you can see, it's automatically added to the shop. You don't need to add this manually. Now, if you have dead animals around and you're thinking to yourself, why aren't they butchering these dead animals? Keep in mind, dead animals that are mangled or rotten cannot be butchered. And also, uh, intelligent creatures like, let's just see, say dwarves or gorlax cannot be butchered either. Now, as you can see, we have all these bits and pieces, and then suddenly there's this stray mule skin right here, right? And then a dwarf is going to grab it, move it over to the tanner shop, and turn it into leather for us. The bigger the animal, the more leather, so if you happen to have a bunch of elephants or a bunch of hydras somehow in your fortress, you might have a very nice source of clothing and or bags. Thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, there is one more thing I would like to cover before we get to the end, however, and that is gelding. Now, if you decide, man, I don't want all of these baby cats everywhere, make yourself a farmer shop, place it up top, whoopsies, make yourself a farmer shop, and uh, place it up top, can't click the right thing, make yourself a farmer shop and place it up top right there. Make it out of whatever's closest, or whatever you choose to make it out of, and then we can geld our animals. So the way the, the way this works is it's just exactly the same process as everything else we've done. Gelding is spaying or fixing, whatever you prefer to use. We're going to uh, fix our yak bull down here using this button. Toggle whether or not this creature will be gelded. So now we're going to leave the game unpaused. And it'll probably be this dwarf, or potentially not, who's doing the gelding. There we go. Our planter, Kib, comes over, grabs this yak bull, and snips their nuts off. Fun fact, uh, you can actually see the combat log and sometimes they fight back. Nope, not this time. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like this series and want to see more of them, there's a ton of them on this YouTube channel. If you want to see me play Dwarf Fortress Live, go to twitch.tv slash blindirl. Mostly six days a week, actually, because I'm going to take this Friday off. But I've been streaming basically seven days a week since the game came out. However, uh, my normal schedule is going to be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays for a very long period of time, and then Sunday afternoons for kind of a bonus stream thing. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one.